Greetings and Happy New Year. As we are looking forward to hopefully a better new year, I thought we should end the current year on a lighter note and together say goodbye to 2021. In 2021, I admit that I needed a few Dr. Blue's prescriptions to get me through the year. But what you are looking at is a hobby rather than a business that got out of hands, brewing high-end Belgian beer in the heart of Belgium with some of the best brewers in the world. But then, who better than an anesthesiologist with knowledge of pharmacology and scientific attention to detail? And what better names for Dr. Blue's prescriptions than Nurblock, Painkiller, Super Pills, Pacemaker, and a Placebo? In Dr. Blue's beer clinic, Dr. Blue's writes the beer prescriptions for most life symptoms. The pharmacist or brewer makes the prescriptions, and Emily, the proud and knowledgeable Dr. Blue's nurse, dispenses them to those in a need of beer therapy. While no amount of alcohol improves health, I personally needed some Dr. Blue's beer prescriptions to get me through the February 2021 issue of the Journal of Anesthesiology and its message on the front cover of the journal. So let's talk about why I think that this position is damaging to the future of regional anesthesia and interventional acute pain management. Before we get started, here's what I think I'm uniquely qualified to talk about this matter. I have participated in clinical trials and published on expert since 2011. I consulted for Pasira for almost 10 years before moving on to other endeavors. I treated patients with this formulation of Bupivacaine and have experienced Exparel as a patient. So I understand the formulation on all angles. So let's get on it. In this journal review, we are going to dissect the February issue of the Journal of Anesthesiology, which has an unusually strong statement on the cover page. Liposomal bupivacaine is not superior to standard local anesthetics. In the meantime, the drug maker of Exparel Pasira has sued the Journal of Anesthesiology, which is also unusual and adds really a lot of spice to this video. And I'm going to stick my neck out and dissect the methodological flows and overgeneralization that occurred in these three articles in the journal that I used to support the statement of the journal's cover page. I will refer to liposomal bupivacaine either by its generic name or, for brevity, as Exparel. Also, several authors of these articles are my academic friends and colleagues who I immensely respect, and I know that my critique here will be taken constructively. That is what we in academics do. We stimulate each other through constructive alternative views, which we have done many times in the past at various pro and con sessions at medical conferences, meetings, and such. So let's get started. This is the cover of the February issue of anesthesiology with an unusually definitive statement. Liposomal pivacaine is not superior to standard local anesthetics. But why would the most reputable and scientific journal of anesthesiology feature such a sensational tabloid-style message on its cover? We asked Professor Dieter Mazotten, one of the brightest academic minds in Europe, for his opinion. They are looking for positive trials, uh, trials that uh, get some traction because in the past they had to sell reprints. Uh, now they want to get tax on, on the internet or online. Now let's take a look at the three articles in the journal which were used to support such a bold statement and let's see if they can stand this particular critique. The first article is a systematic review and meta-analysis. The second one is an unusually long narrative review of 66 pages and to spice it up, there is an editorial written by the former acting chair for the Food and Drug Administration, which advised on experts approval for nerve blocks. It will get really interesting. Now, the first article in the meta-analysis was designed to evaluate the effectiveness of liposomal bupivacaine for analgesia as compared to regular bupivacaine. So let's take a look at the conclusions of the meta-analysis first. First, liposomal bupivacaine is no better than standard local anesthetics. That is not correct. As the meta-analysis did not include any other standard local anesthetics but bupivacaine. In other words, they did not study lidocaine, bupivacaine, levobupivacaine, but bupivacaine only. So that statement already is not correct. The meta-analysis concluded that exporter resulted in statistically significant but clinically unimportant decreases in VAS score. 
In other words, expert will decrease the VS score by one, but by design, the paper wanted the reduction to be two in order to be clinically meaningfully significant. Now, let's look at what decreases in VS pain are considered clinically meaningful in other recent studies of regional anesthesia and pain medicine. In their paper in Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine in 2019, Gallagher and colleagues reported a significant benefit of the regional blocks in injured soldiers who received the nerve blocks in the battlefield. The nerve blocks decreased the pain scores between 0.3 and 0.5, and the article concluded that the use of regional anesthesia was associated with sustained pain benefits. In fact, these findings were deemed so clinically meaningful that the article was featured as the editor's choice on the front page of RAPM. Here's another example. A ductic canal block has become the standard of care for analgesia in patients having total knee replacements. And this is one of the original papers on the benefits of a ductic canal block that established the ductic canal block as a standard. In the paper, a ductic canal block decreased only the dynamic pain, not the pain at rest, and the decrease was by 1.4. So why should Exparel decrease the pain by 2 in order to be clinically meaningful, as opposed to these other studies where 0.3 or 0.5 was already significant? Exparel, by this design choice alone, was set up to fail in this meta-analysis due to the unrealistic pain reduction threshold. Studies on pain are extremely difficult as pain is very subjective and difficult to measure, but very few, if any, pain interventions and medications can have such a dramatic impact on pain within the context of multimodal analgesia. In fact, if you put to test any single component of a typical ERAS protocol, except opioids, it will not decrease the pain by 2 on a scale to 10. For example, if you add or eliminate acetaminophen, the pain scores will not change by two points, and yet IV acetaminophen is a standard component of multimodal analgesias everywhere worldwide. So it's really extremely difficult to tease out substantial contribution to pain decrease of any one single modality. The decrease in pain score by one, as found in meta-analysis, to my opinion, is very clinically significant, particularly within the context of multimodal analgesia. Moreover, the decrease of the pain by one may mean a difference between discharge home or admission to the hospital for pain management and administration of opioids. Therefore, decrease of the pain by one point on a scale can make a meaningful clinical difference. Let's now look into the high-level evidence that the meta-analysis repeats about four times throughout the article. The FDA approved Exparel for interscaling block in a dose of 133 milligrams. So that is the established dose for Exparel. But the first study in a table used Exparel in a dose of 88 milligrams for interscaling brachial plexus block. Therefore, this study was substantially underdosed because it was started before the dose for Exparel in interscaling brachial plexus block was established. Therefore, this study is really obsolete. An inclusion of the data of an unpublished older study where the Exparel was underdosed does not qualify for high level evidence. And in fact, it may have decreased the magnitude of the pain benefit of Exparel in this meta-analysis. Moreover, four out of nine studies in this meta-analysis were not published in a peer-reviewed literature. In other words, they were not exposed to the scrutiny of the peer review process. In contrast, both Patel and Van der Peter's studies on the use of liposomal bupivacaine in interscaling brachial plexus block were published in the peer-reviewed journals and demonstrated the superiority of Exparel over placebo or plain bupivacaine. The FDA approved Exparel for interscaling brachial plexus block. However, the meta-analysis out of nine studies that were included in analysis only had four studies that included the data uh, that are pertinent to the interscaling brachial plexus block. Therefore, in the remaining six studies, Exparel was used for non-approved experimental purposes. The meta-analysis also states that the benefit of Exparel was rendered non-significant after excluding one study that was industry-sponsored. Why do the authors consider all industry-sponsored trials automatically biased? 
I find this inappropriate, as all three articles refer to the industry sponsored trial as high risk of bias. First, the study that the meta-analysis refers to was not industry sponsored, but it was industry supported by the grant. Therefore, the industry never had access or ownership of the data. Moreover, its credibility was affirmed through the formal audits by the Department and the Institutional Ethics Committee on the request by the journal. In fact, this may be the only study out of these nine studies that was audited for ethic conduct and data integrity. The funding provided professional research staff and monitoring for quality. And finally, the FDA approved Exparel for interscaling brachyplexus block. However, the meta-analysis out of nine studies that were included in the meta-analysis only included four studies that focused on interscaling brachyplexus block. This is extremely important because in the rest of these studies, the interscaling was not used. Instead, Exparel was used for experimental, non-approved purposes. For example, the dose of Exparel for adductor canal block, intercostal nerve blocks, uh, intercostal nerve blocks, dorsal penile nerve blocks, fascial yaka blocks, myofascial plane blocks, simply has never been established. And because in the meta-analysis, individual studies were weighted by their overall sample size, the weighted mean difference of pain between liposomal bupivacaine and plain local anesthetics, which is the primary outcome, relied heavily on the contribution of the studies that were experimental, where the expiral dose was not established and had nothing to do with interscaling brachyplexus block. Let's hear what Professor Mazotin has to say about meta-analysis. People make their careers out of attacking someone else's uh, studies. Uh, they, they get publications, they get citations, they get pro-con debates on conferences uh, without setting up their own trials quite often. Let's now briefly review the narrative review, which I find unusual for the Journal of Anesthesiology, which is traditionally very stingy with the journal space. The review has as many as 66 pages. I personally find it easier to read the original articles rather than their recital with the interpretation. The narrative also refers to the industry-sponsored biases. However, if you read the disclosures, it's quite evident that the authors of these articles, like most of us in academics, have published numerous studies that were supported by the industry. The industry funding, in fact, allows research organizations to hire and train research staff and improve the quality of clinical trials. Usually the, the, the trials that are sponsored by pharma companies, etc., they're of higher quality. Why? Because there's more budget, they're more used to dealing with um, the, these administrative aspects of, of doing uh, trial work. The uh, fringes uh, on, on uh, science and clinical trials are much higher in sponsored trials. And this is why I'm also surprised that in the editorial, the former acting chair for the FDA also implies that industry-sponsored trials are biased. In fact, nearly all new submissions to drug approvals to the FDA are funded by the industry. Should we assume that studies upon which new drugs are approved are all flawed? The editorial also discusses whether the drug's benefits are worth a certain ticket price for the drug. The new drugs are proved based on their effectiveness. It is to the market to judge its cost-benefit ratio. Therefore, it's unfair to say that the drug is not effective enough because it is too expensive. Would the editorial find the drug more effective if it was 10 times cheaper? This does not make sense as the FDA does not approve drugs based on its price, but based on the documented safety and efficacy. An old drug eventually becomes generic and inexpensive, at some point as liposomal bupivacaine becomes generic, I bet that it's going to be used everywhere and by everyone and in a lot more patients. The narrative review suggests that we should use the proven technologies instead, such as perineural catheters, but here are the reasons that I strongly disagree. To begin with, catheters are actually a lot more expensive than liposomal bupivacaine. There's a cost of the pump, which is typically a few hundreds of dollars, the equipment for catheters is a lot more expensive than equipment for single shot blocks. There's a pharmacy fee for mixing of the drug. Inserting and managing catheters after insertion required trained staff and time. So cost-wise, catheters are magnitudes more expensive. Catheters 
also often migrate from their therapeutic space. In one study, as many as 25% of the catheters were outside of the affected space, even in lean volunteers after only six hours. You can imagine how many catheters dislocate in actual patients. The management of the failed catheter is also very complex. It requires expertise, time, and it is disruptive to the daily work flow to diagnose the catheter that's failed, to remove the catheter that's failed, to insert a new one. Uh, it's just uh, very disruptive to the daily workflow. According to the available data, a catheter market constitutes only about 5% of the total neuroblock volume. And that is because it is much more difficult to establish neuroblock catheters service than a single shot neuroblock service. That leaves a lot more patients reliant on opioids for the pain management. In contrast, a single injection neuroblock is much easier to perform, learn, and it's readily available in many hospitals. And at the end, I'm personally disappointed that we have taken such a negative or overly critical approach to the potential of the liposomal bupivacaine. Instead, I believe that we should research for the other best indications for liposomal bupivacaine beyond interscalene and femoral block. The best dose response of mixes of Expirel with plain bupivacaine and the best modes, most effective modes of its administration. In these times of the COVID pandemic and opioid crisis, we are in a unique position to make regional anesthesia and nerve blocks even more relevant. Instead of inventing new techniques with few hours of benefits with standard local anesthetics, and instead of engaging in lengthy and productive debates that may disadvantage both our subspecialty and patients, I believe that we should engage in an active coordinated effort to reaffirm and expand the value of regional anesthesia and nerve blocks in our specialty. These times are truly unique, and I'm afraid we're wasting this opportunity. What I'm particularly concerned about is that such a negative stance to liposomal bupivacaine that we have collectively taken may discourage the pharma industry from developing even better, much needed long-acting local anesthetics. Without such developments, the value of regional anesthesia will be increasingly more limited and challenged. Comparing liposomal bupivacaine to plain bupivacaine constitutes gross misunderstanding of what the formulation does as we are comparing apples versus oranges. Liposomal bupivacaine is like neuroblock catheters. For the catheters, you first must give the bolus of the local anesthetic through the needle or catheter to establish the block, and only then infuse the local anesthetics through the catheter. Just the same, with liposomal bupivacaine, it must be mixed with a small amount of plain bupivacaine to establish the block first. And as the plain bupivacaine wears off, the liposomal bupivacaine releases sufficient amount of the free bupivacaine to prolong the block, which is evident from every pharmacokinetic study published to date. And that is the verdict of this debate according to my own personal views. Both Exparel and Neuroblock will get you comfortably numb, but Exparel is less likely to result in a hangover. Hope you enjoyed the video and Happy New Year to everyone.